Hey, welcome to WA Production Dubstep Snare Synthesizing course. In this course, I'm going to show you how I made, how I synthesized fully in Ableton Operator this snare drum. This course contains four videos. In the first video, we are going to talk about snare theory and we are going to make the bottom or the bass part of the snare. In the second video, we are going to make a transient, again, in Ableton Operator. In the fourth video, we are going to make a noise tail, but it's not really a noise. And in the fourth video, we are going to mix and glue these layers all together to form a wonderful, punchy and hard hitting snare drum. So if you want to step up your game in synthesizing your own snare drums, come with me and I'm going to teach you how to make it. Let's talk about snares in advance. I prepared this snare here, what I made several months ago, and we can use that to analyze it and decide what parts we need to resynthesize or what parts we need to make. Because, you know, we have several ways to create snares or synthesize snares. The first way is to take a live acoustic snare and process it pretty heavily to find a way to create your own snare, what you want to achieve, like a punchy and heavy snare. This is one way. The second way is to, you know, synthesize several parts of it you want to change. For example, if you want to change the bottom part, you only need to synthesize the bottom part, filter out the existing low end from your snare and, you know, just put it in there and replace the bottom part. Or you can go and synthesize a full snare from scratch. And this is what we're going to do, obviously. But without hopping into it, we need to decide and we need to analyze this snare. You know, this will help us to save time. We can decide what we need to do to reach that sound, what we are looking for. So let's take the bottom part first. It looks like a sine wave, but uh, it is either distorted or saturated sine wave, or it is not a sine, but a square wave or a filtered square wave, because, you know, in a sine wave, we don't see these sailings and bottoms. A uh, sine wave is more, you know, smooth and even. This looks like more like a square wave. So, but at the end of the bottom part, we can see that it is smoothens out and uh, looks like it is filtered, like low pace filtered, or it looks something like that. So what we want to do here is use a, probably a square wave and apply a filter, a low pace filter at this part, you know, to filter it out. This is the first thing. If we have a closer look at the very first part of the snare bottom, this is how I call the bass part or the lower part of the snare, we can see that it changes frequency because uh, if you see this wave, we can see that it is a lot longer and a lot lower frequency than this part, this wave or this wave. This is the transient part, let's talk about it later. So probably the bottom part has some pitch transient or some pitch bending in the beginning of the bottom. And this is what we're going to apply to our snare bottom too. This is what we need to know about how to synthesize the snare bottom. It is really not a big deal. So take a square wave, for example, or a distorted sine wave, or just, you know, some FMing kind of stuff or an additive kind of sine wave. Let's apply a filter on the very end of the snare and apply a pitch bend in the beginning of the snare. So this is what we're going to follow now. The second thing what we need to do is synthesize this section of the snare. Now it is really hard to decide where the transient ends because we can see that the bottom part starts here, but the transient starts here. It's pretty obvious, but we cannot really decide where it ends. So we will see. Um, we will synthesize a, a clicky kind of sound for the transient and we will decide what we need to do to make it work. So synthesizing a snare is really about, you know, experimenting and trying and different things and, and fixing mistakes because in most of the cases we run into like, okay, this is a good bottom, okay, this is a good transient, but somehow it will not fit with the tail or the button will not match with the transient and there are several issues you need to fix when you make a snare. It is the same when we create a new song, when we produce something. It's just a little smaller portion of it. This is only a snare, synthesized snare, but there are tons of ways to mess up your snare. This is the second thing. Now, obviously, the third thing is to create the tail of the snare, which, um, let's listen to it. 
it just sounds like a regular white noise but it's not because you know white noises don't contain this metallic kind of um, content to the noise a white noise is just a noise you don't hear any metallic uh, high frequency ear bleeding kind of tone to it but it definitely has some the other problem is uh, you cannot really do anything to a simple white noise like of course you can eq it you can add different effects but it will always sound just like a regular white noise so we need to figure out something how to create a white noisy kind of thing but also keeping that you know metallic kind of tone because these snares always try to mimic the sound of a regular and acoustic snare or at least you know like adding layers and most of the guys when produce snares they use like splash hi-hats or crashes and cymbals and those always contain like a drastic amount of metallic tone so somehow we need to synthesize a tail like a noisy kind of thing which also contains noise and uh, at the same time it contains some metallic content and uh, last thing we need to see and apply is getting back to the transient and the bottom connection we need to set some delay for the bottom part because you know we have the transient and the bottom part starts a little later so there are several things to apply this if you use different channels different tracks for the different parts of the snare it's okay you just push it away or if you use a drum rack or an instrument rack you need to put a delay onto the bottom you know on 100 percent wet and apply a few milliseconds of delay to it and of course you need to pull back the feedback to zero because you don't want to repeat your repeat your bottom that would make some some huge problems in the phases so i think this is what we need to do so this is the theory of synthesizing snare and the first thing we want to do now is apply an operator because this is what we're going to use to create all the content and all the parts of the snare of course you can use serum or other synthesizer for example fm8 but i as experienced operator is the best tool because you know when you go to the oscillator tab you can draw in some harmonic content which is very very easy to do and you can create some awesome sounds using that now the first thing i want to do is make a midi so the snare bottom should be this long for example and you know a snare bottom always plays a little higher than a kick drum so the main part should be at around f2 and this is what i'm going to do now so let's choose an f2 and uh, let's choose a square wave for that so as i told you before this is what we are going to do now now the easiest part will be if i delete or eq out the lower part of my reference snare and it will be very easy you know to decide if we are on a good path on a good track to create a bottom part of the snare So we now filtered the very low of the snare of the reference snare and this is obviously not a good snare now and let's apply a filter now as i told you before but with some envelope push up the envelope a little and narrow the decay something like that Okay, I think this will not sound bad. So right now let's apply a pitch envelope. And what I want to do here is push up the initial. This is what we're going to use to create some clickiness of the bottom part. And of course we are going to use a different click sound, a transient sound. And push up the peak to 24. This is going to be basically the pitch for the decay. And let's adjust the, oops, not the slopes but the attack time and the decay time to achieve some pretty nice clicky kind of sound some transient for the bottom part what we are going to combine with the percussion kind of sound but if you want to hear the effect we need to push up the pitch envelope
okay, this sounds pretty good. So let's add the EQ because we still need to cut out some frequencies what we don't really like. Now, this is an interesting thing here, because most of the guys like to, and to be honest, I do it sometimes, to cut out the very lows of the snare. You know, you can see the peak here. Exactly at the E2 frequency, so at around 170 Hz. So people like to cut the rest of the low frequencies of it. And uh, it is cool, I mean, it works, but sometimes I experience that it ruins the phases of the snare and somehow the overall result will not be as good as if we, you know, just keep the very lows. So we will see at the end, because, you know, I like to resample my sounds and analyze it if all the phases and everything will sound and look well. So right now let's leave the very lows, okay, because overall the snare, the bottom part of the snare sounds pretty well. And the next step, let's add some saturation, but before the EQ, because we are going to just, you know, cut the very highs, what probably the saturator will generate. This is the snare button, what I wanted to create, and let's check it, how it sounds, along with the rest of the snare. Now, it is not the best now, so let's try to adjust the starting point of the snare button. Okay, so adjusting the attack and the decay time on the pitch envelope and adjusting the starting point of the bottom and some EQing and of course with the filtering we was able to create a little harder hitting snare. Now don't mind the transposing up because uh, you know it's just the personal taste. If you like the higher pitch sound or not you can go back anytime and you know use an F sharp or what, what is the note we used an F note, but I just like how it sounds two semitones up. And if you want to process further, what I like to do is add a multiband dynamics rack. What I use, you know, to split the frequency up to three bands. Okay, that's it. Three band split. And let's do some trick on the very middles, like at around 200 hertz. So I'm going to set the bottom split, which should be at around, well, 200 hertz. And the top split at around, I don't know, like 300 maybe or 400. We will see. This should be good. Let's apply a saturation only on this section. So what I want to do is the middle part, saturation. So let's drop a saturator to the middle part. Oh, we already have one, so we don't need to add another one.
okay, we boosted the energy on the bottom too. So I think this will sound pretty good now. And maybe what we can do is adding a drum bus because I love Ableton 10 drum bus, but in this case we don't need the saturator to the end, just you know applying some transients and uh, boosting the transients on the bottom part. Okay, it turns out that if we leave the, well, the middle high frequencies, it can create some very nice transients to the bottom part, what we can use up along with the separate transient, what we're going to make in the next video. So right now, I'm pretty satisfied with the bottom part. It sounds pretty well. So in the next video, we're going to synthesize the transient part of the snare.